So in most of my videos and tutorials, I have been using Next Auth, which works great for the most part if you just want social media logins and magic link logins. But at some point, if you want to customize it a little bit more and add credential based authorization, that's where I feel like this library kind of falls short. For example, I have this BidBuddy uh, tutorial that I worked on a couple of days ago. And this is actually using Auth.js. I know it's still beta, but I wanted to try it out. And I wanted to try doing the credentials login, right? So to do the credentials login, you just go ahead and import this credentials function. You put it in your providers. And then in your authorize method, this is where you do a database lookup based on the credentials that are passed in. So I think you get like a request here or something. And based on the request, you look up the username and password grab the user from the database, you verify that the password matches with the hash, and then you return an object or null. So let me just show you this. If I go over to sign in, and again, this is with next auth slash auth.js. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in whatever password and click sign in. Notice that it fails, and that's because this method is returning null. So if you were to instead return a user object, so like I could say one, two, three here, this should work fine. It doesn't matter what I type in because I just hard coded. So if I click sign in with credentials, that should sign in and that redirects me back to my dashboard. But notice that I'm not actually signed in. There's no session set. This still shows sign in. This should show my name. This should show like a bunch of other stuff associated with the user, but it just shows sign in. And then also if I go to Drizzle Studio, you'll notice that there's no users created. Although this does kind of give you a path to do credentials based login, and it gives you a nice page to type in a username and a password or an email and a password, it doesn't really explain where in their setup do you actually need to create the user, where in the setup do you need to set the session. And it's no secret that Next Auth and Auth.js are very opinionated on not allowing people to ever use email password authentication, which sounds great on paper, but in reality, when you know a majority of the web is used to logging into your application a certain way, maybe they don't trust Google and they don't want to do Google sign-in. Maybe they don't want to do OAuth sign-in. Maybe magic link sign-in kind of sucks. Their only option is to do email password based log. And so I personally don't think an authorization library should be opinionated on preventing people from easily setting that up. Even in the auth.js docs, you kind of read through here, they don't tell you how to actually create the session. I mean, technically, if you were to log in with a user who doesn't exist, you could just create it right here in the database for um, the login. But again, it doesn't really explain like, okay, well now how do you set the session so that the user doesn't see a login button still? So with all that, I decided, you know what, I'm kind of done with next auth and auth.js. I feel like the library is just too slow to actually make updates and like and support the real type of logins that users expect, which is why I've been looking into this library called Lucia, which is another type of auth library. And it's a lot more manual labor. Like you have to kind of get into the weeds of authorization to get this all set up. But I do think it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So you can kind of read through here. They have some tutorials and documentation about how you can get this set up with GitHub OAuth. I wish they had code examples for Google OAuth. I mean, it's very easy to get set up once you have it because they end up using a third-party library for the OAuth. They have adapters for Drizzle ORM, which is what I'm using in most of my videos, so that's nice. But I will say it does take a little bit more of a steep learning curve than Next Auth. Next Auth is pretty nice. It's just basically install it. You set some env environment variables to find some configuration. It works. This is a little bit more involved which is fine once you kind of like look through their repo examples and understand it. So I'm going to walk you through what I currently have set up. If I show you my application here, I'm going to go ahead and just refresh this and show you. So in my starter kit application, I'm making a custom sign-in page. So in next auth, you typically redirect to like the next auth sign-in page. I think you can customize it some, or you could basically just write your own and just do like a sign-in callbacks when you click buttons. But with Lucia, basically I have Google sign-in, I have GitHub sign-in, and I have email magic link. And those are the primary ways you can sign in, but at the bottom I have sign in uh, with email. So if I click on this, it takes me to another path called sign in slash email, where a user can sign in with whatever email they want, or they can create an account. Again, this is all custom. This is the components I built myself, and I'm just hooking into my uh, endpoints that do the Lucia calls. So let me first show you how sign up works. Basically, again, it's just an email password, confirm password type of flow. It has validation set up. And if I were to do testing at example.com, I think you at least have to have eight characters here. Let's do eight characters. Once you click register, what that does is it makes a request to an endpoint to basically create those credentials if they don't already exist. So let's just try it and see. Okay, so now we're registering. That's gonna hit the Lucia auth library methods. It's going to create a user. It's gonna hash the password stored in my database. And then it creates a session. And now we're actually logged in 
as that user. Okay, so how did that work? Let's just look through the code real quick. This is just a traditional uh, use form hook in React. But the important part is that we're calling a signup action. So let's look at the signup action. And we take in an email and we take in a password. And I'm calling a register user use case, which is going to do a lot of the business logic for hashing the password and whatnot, creating the user. But once that user comes back successfully, I'm calling lucia.createSession. And then you can pass it whatever information you want to put in the session, including the user ID. And then you can create a session cookie using that session ID like this. And then in the cookies, you basically set the name of the cookie, the value of the cookie, and then the attributes of that cookie. So if we go to our cookies here, actually, I don't know which one is it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log out and log back in. I should just be able to refresh. I'm signed out. Um, and let me just do the sign in flow to show you that that does work as well. Let's do testing at example.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that sets an auth session, as you can see down here. Now, I believe this is a session ID. I don't think it's like a, a JWT or anything. It's just a session ID. And so if you were to look at this ID, and then we go to Drizzle Studio and look at sessions, you'll notice that we have an ID here that matches. So basically, that ID that's stored in your browser's cookie is going to be used to look up what user ID you actually have uh, been logged in as. Now, I don't know if Lucia Auth has like JWT strategies. I haven't really looked into it. Um, but I'm just going to stick with a database type of strategy. I think it gives you more flexibility for security. You can invalidate sessions and stuff like that. But let's continue looking through the sign up. So let's click on this register user use case. And what this is doing is basically taking in the username, email, and the password. And I get the user by the email and see if it already exists. If it does, I throw an error. Otherwise, I go ahead and create a user. Let's look at this. All this is doing is taking in the email and password. And the important part is we take the password and we actually create a salt and we hash it using that salt. And then we store that into our database. Okay, So this has a password hash and a salt. And we also track the email here. So if I go back over to Drizzle Studio and go to user, you'll see that I have an anonymous user. The email is testingonexample.com. It has a password hash stored there and it has a salt. Okay. And so that is what we're going to be talking about when we do the sign in flow. We're going to use that salt in the hash to verify the password. And then you might ask, well, how does the password hashing kind of work? I'm just calling the default crypto method here. I call this method. I have no idea what this stands for, but basically you pass it the plain text password, your salt, some amount of iterations. I don't know what this configuration is and then SHA-512, and then after you run this, you'll get back a key, which is your hash password. And then I basically write that in a promise, I return it so that I can easily use this interface and then just store the hash, right? So that's how registration works. And then once you have that set, it sets that cookie on your browser and then the user is technically logged in. So let's look at the other use case, which is signing in. So I have a sign in action. Let's go to the sign in page, go to the sign in action. So this flow is very identical to the registration. Um, at least all this stuff here is. It still creates a Lucia session, creates a cookie. It sets that on the Next.js framework. But let's look at the sign in use case. If you look at this, again, it just calls this method, which first looks up that user by the email. I also have um, a second clause here to make sure that I'm looking up by the type email because you can have multiple accounts. You could log in with Google, you could log in with GitHub, you could log in with email, and they could all potentially share the same email address. And so I have this second condition here to check that the account type is email so that I'm only looking up users by email that match that email type. This is an enum over here. So if I go to account types, the account types can be email, Google, or GitHub. Because like I said, when you log into Google and GitHub, we actually store that information. If there is no user in the database, we basically return null. And then we verify the password. Again, when you sign in, you have to send in a plain text password and we have to verify that against the real password. So this does some similar logic. Basically, it does the same method call. I think I could probably clean that up and just have this taken the user. But it gets the user and then that on the user object, we have a salt and a password. If neither of those are set, we return false. If they are, we basically take the plain text password that the user is trying to sign in with. We hash it again with that salt that was stored for that user. And then we verify that the hash that comes out, it needs to match the hash that was attached to the user object that's already in the database. So that's how the registration and the sign-in kind of works. And then if everything's good, you know, there's no like nulls returned or no falses returned, 
we set those cookies. So that's just one piece of the Lucia auth setup that I'm doing. The other piece is the OAuth sign-in. How do you do OAuth with Lucia? So you notice if I go back to the application and I sign out, so notice I just signed out. We should probably talk about how the signing out kind of works as well. So let's go and find a sign out button. So here, I don't know where I'm calling this. I think I'm calling it here, which calls an action. Okay, so I have a sign out action. All this is doing is calling a validate request method, which gets back the session based on the cookie. So that's going to look at that session ID that's in the cookie. That's going to make a database call to get the user back. And if the session is not defined, I just return unauthorized. Otherwise, I use the session ID. I call Lucia invalidate session. That's automatically going to use that drizzle adapter and delete the session from my database. And then I basically create a blank cookie and I overwrite the existing cookie so that the user gets signed out in the front end. And then I redirect back to the sign-in page. And again, this is all in the Lucia docs. This isn't something I had to figure out. Like I just copied some stuff, some code from their docs and used it. But the important part here is that this validate request, this is the method that you're going to end up using basically all throughout your Next.js application. Um, any of your React server components, you want to call this to get the session. I think you also get back the user here. And so you'll have like the user information, the ID and stuff like that. Okay, so let's move on to the OAuth. How does the OAuth sign-in work? It was a little bit more nuanced to set up. But if I go over to my sign-in page, you'll notice I have sign-in with Google here, the button, which represents this button. And then I also have a sign-in with GitHub down here. And when you click these buttons, all it does is it takes you to an API slash login slash Google or API login slash GitHub. Let's go API login Google, and I'll show you that example. So what this is doing is Lucia recommends using an Arctic library for all the OAuth stuff. And basically, when you do a GET request to this endpoint, we generate some state, we generate a code verifier, and then we use that to generate a URL, which we're going to use to invoke Google at some point, right? So we basically say Google auth, create authorization URL, we pass that information, and then we also pass in some scopes. So for example, if I want to get your email that's associated with your Google account, you might want to add that into your scope. It's very important so you can email your users later on. And then you basically take those and you put them in cookies. So you're going to set those on the user's browser because you want to redirect to the Google login. So this right here, if I were to highlight this, what is this doing? This is the part which basically redirects you to the Google auth, OAuth login, okay? And so once they select their user on this page, that's going to redirect you back to this callback. Okay? You might ask, well, how's this callback set up? Well, if I go to my auth file, you'll notice that I have this Google auth and I've set up a callback right here. So this is telling Google that, hey, once they click on their user profile, take them back to my application slash API login Google callback, which happens to be this callback route right here. So let's click on this and let's kind of read through this. Got a lot of console logs here because I was debugging some stuff. So like I said, it's a lot more manual labor to get this set up. But once you have it set up, I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty good to go. So again, this code was all taken from an example application and I modified it a little bit. The way this works is basically once you click on this profile here, that's going to redirect to this callback, which runs this code. And this code has to basically do a couple things. It has to check your cookies for those Google OAuth states and verifiers that we stored in that previous section. So these two are stored in the browser. We're going to get them back from the browser after that redirect. But there's also some things that are stored in the search parameters that Google sets, right? We get a code in a state. And so what we do is we want to make sure all those things are set. Otherwise, we return like a 400 error. And then down here, we need to validate the code in the code verifier to get back some tokens. And then using those tokens, we need to hit the Google Open ID Connect endpoint, asset that token, and that should return us back some information about the user, right? So in our case, we get back a Google user which has all this stuff on it. So the main difference between the OAuth logins versus the email logins is that when the user comes back, we're going to look up in our database based on a Google ID that was stored. Instead of using like an email, we're going to look up a Google ID using the Google sub that came in from this endpoint. Okay, and if the user exists, we basically just set a session and then we return them back to the home page of our application. Pretty straightforward, right? Now down here, if the user does not exist, we have to create them in our database. So I'm going to go ahead and say account type is Google. I set the Google ID. I set a username. I set their profile image. And then I set their email if it happens to be uh, existing. 
And then after setting all that in our database, we set a session and again, we just redirect back to the home page. So that's how that works. When I logged in as Google, um, you'll see I'm at the home page now. And then if I go to my users table in Drizzle, you'll see that I do have a login for Google here. This is my image. So I got the image over here. Awesome. Um, we have the account type as Google. We got a contact email, which is uh, webdiffcody at gmail.com. Anyway, that is the setup. And I did the same thing with uh, GitHub. GitHub is a little bit simpler because I don't have to set two cookies. I just need to set one, but it's the same idea. You get the cookie, you make the request to the Google API, you do the session stuff, you check the user, you create the user. And I could probably make a helper utility that abstracts this to make it less duplicated because a lot of this code between this callback and this callback are identical. Um, really the only thing that changes is what endpoint you're calling, what user information is returned back, and then also like what cookies are stored. But sometimes duplicating code uh, is okay. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and keep it like that. Anyway, that's how I have authentication set up in this starter kit with Lucia auth. I decided again to get off next auth because I'm just, something just feels kind of gross about it. So if you guys are interested, be sure to check out wdcstarterkit.com if you want to subscribe to this newsletter. I will send out an email when this thing is live and there'll be tutorial walkthroughs kind of explaining a lot of the code and how to get this deployed to production so that you can have your first SaaS application ready to go and make some money. All right, that's it. Have a good day and happy coding.